And, you know, that's not the point. I don't care how safe and effective it is. That was not the point. It was to have the government was going to force an elixir inside my flesh without my willing consent. Not going to happen. Uh, I was uh, working for one of the local hospitals as a security officer and my supervisor notified me that there was a training opportunity. A team was being formed with Homeland Security. Uh, they asked me to be part of this team and so I'm uh, hoping to get some extra training and also see an insight of what actually was going on with Homeland Security. I, I accepted the offer and volunteered to be on this team. All they told us that it would be training on uh, chemical, nuclear and biological terrorism. We've been taught for several years that nuclear, chemical, biological agents and effects are out there by several of our enemies to use at any given time. They showed a lot of slides of uh, police officers or firemen uh, dealing with a, a chemical fire or dealing with a, some type of chemical spill. So they would show pictures of uh, bodies, you know, either still alive or dead that uh, had been exposed to different weapons uh, so that they kind of that fear factor started setting in and they were letting us know that how serious this was. Now to the latest on H1N1 and new figures showing a four-fold increase in its death toll. Primarily our job as law enforcement would be to uh, remove the people from their homes. Um, they told us that there would be usually the city buses or school buses would be uh, brought into the neighborhoods. We would go door to door in teams and we would evacuate the people from their homes and take them to a decontamination area. Uh, they told us that this would be uh, a rough thing for us to do, that we needed to uh, prepare ourselves physically and mentally for the fact that we are removing people from their homes, that a lot of people aren't going to want to go. They, they, don't, they may not realize that there's some type of danger out there, they told us, and that it would be for their greater good for us to take them to these decontamination areas for their safety. So uh, talked about having to actually go door to door, knock on the door, explain to them what's going on, that they need to come with us so that for their safety so they can be decontaminated because they may already be exposed. Uh, and they told us that you know people aren't going to want to leave their home, but this is not an option, that once the orders are given, uh, that a mass evacuation must happen. It, it has now become law. If you've been diagnosed with probable or presumed 2009 H1N1 or swine flu in recent months, you may be surprised to know this. The odds are you didn't have H1N1 flu. In fact, you probably didn't have flu at all. We were told that takedown tactics would be necessary. Uh, some of these people will not go willingly. We must take them down. Uh, of course, they brought out, most uh, law enforcement are familiar with the uh, zip tie handcuffs, the plastic zip tie handcuffs, and that's what we would be using because they're cheap and easy to use and uh, take someone down, handcuff them, remove them out of their home and place them in the, to the bus that would be awaiting on the street to uh, take them out. They also talked to us about the fact that a lot of homeowners have a weapon in their home, especially in this area. I mean, this is a southwest Missouri, so there's a lot of, uh, you know, it's a fairly gun-friendly state, and they warned us about that, that there's going to be homeowners that may have a gun in the home or may have a gun on their person. So be prepared uh, to use tasers, pepper spray, and possibly even lethal force. But there were four of them with rifles and holding on us with our hands in the air until they got in our boat. So they got on the boat and they, they asked us, do you have any loaded weapons? Yes, we do. They're in the two back compartments. Wayne went to show them where the gun was. And he screams, don't touch it. Don't even move. I'll get it. We've removed them from their homes. We put them on a bus. The bus goes to a designated uh, quarantine area, which might be the local hospital. It might be a local church. might be the local school or local community center. The buses would pull in. There would be armed security already there. Uh, we would remove the people off of the buses and they would get in a line in front of that tent and that's where they would go in to be decontaminated. Local, state, federal and private agencies, they are all taking part in a week-long domestic emergency response exercise. They're testing their ability to respond to multiple disasters in the Chicago area. Our job would be to go around the building, find every exit and make sure that it's secure with chains and padlocks so that there would only be one entrance and one exit only. What you're looking at behind me is the triage area that is being set up to deal with the victims. The people get off of the buses, we line them up. Then they told us, and this was the part that really started bothering me, that before they can enter this uh, decontamination area, they must be stripped naked so that they could be decontaminated. And they said that, you know, people are not going to want to do this. It could be snowing outside, it could be sleeting, it could be raining, it does not matter. They must be stripped down naked. An officer on either side of the line right at the entrance of these tents, armed, ordering someone to remove their clothing. If they did not remove them, they were taken to the ground, handcuffed, and the clothing would be removed uh, by force. So they're stripped down naked, possibly handcuffed, 
And then it's inside of that tent is going to be like an assembly line of sorts. You've got two or three different stations. The first one, they come in and they hose them down. Now, everyone working in this, and these are the, going to be your medical staff and your first responder uh, staff, and they're in moon suits, non-rebreather moon suits. Um, they hose them down, they have uh, large scrub brushes, and this is something afterwards we did in training of how to do this. It, you'd have a bucket with you know, soap and water, and they would clean you down. Um, they would go to the, you know, kind of move you down to the next person, and they would rinse you off. Uh, next person would dry you off. Uh, and then at the end, you would receive a vaccination. They specifically told us that, that there would be most likely in every scenario, there would be vaccinations given because they don't know what you may have come in contact with. Now, did they go into detail of what that vaccine would be? No, they did not. But they did say that there would be vaccinations and then they would receive clothing, which uh, most likely would be some type of uh, jumpsuit or hospital type scrubs like you would see at a jail. They are given those and then they're escorted inside the building where they will stay. That they would be there until released by the local government or they would be there until they would be removed to uh, transfer to another more secure facility. They didn't go into detail of what type of more secure facility, but I guess you could use your imagination of, of what we're talking about. And I'm sitting there and, and I was trying to figure out, I'm thinking, why, why the vaccinations? I mean, there, there could be some things if it was a pandemic virus. Uh, maybe I could see that, but most vaccines need to be given before you're exposed to the virus for them to work. You, you, know, you don't get uh, the flu and then get the flu vaccine. It usually doesn't work that way. It's usually beforehand that you have to get it. But they, they said several times that at the end of this decontamination line, you would be given a vaccine, you would be given clothing, uh, and then taken into the quarantine area. Under a program sponsored by the Department of Homeland Security, police officers were trained to go door to door, removing people from their homes with deadly force if necessary, escorting the people to school buses and being delivered to a decontamination area, usually at a school or local church, where the subjects will be hosed down, scrubbed down, given a series of vaccinations and held prisoner until they can be transferred to a more secure facility. The Department of Homeland Security has these programs embedded in the policing communities across the United States, just waiting for orders to be given.